Andrade Ward. Joe likes to have conk in his mouth, by the way. There's pictures. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming out. I'm BJ. He already told you that. You can giggle. I don't care. Doesn't bother me. I had a really cool dad, and I've been thinking about it a lot because Father's Day is coming up in a couple weeks. My dad was a really cool guy. We spent a lot of time together talking about just about anything. And uh, Sunday afternoons was kind of our time. We'd go out and drive around and talk about stuff. My dad was like me, never short for words, so we were always, pretty much always had something to talk about. One particular Sunday afternoon, we're driving around, and I'm trying to get my dad to talk. I'm trying to bring up different subjects. Nothing's working. He's just like, hands in the wheel, eyes straight forward. Very kind of sullen, and I'm like, this is great. So I just finally stopped talking. We get home, pulls in the driveway. He's literally staring at the garage door with his hands on top of the steering wheel. <coughs> I can tell he's got something on his mind he needs to say, and I can tell he's having a hard time saying it. So I said, okay, I'm gonna go in. I reached for the door handle, he goes, wait. I'm like, okay. I'm like, what's up? He's still very quiet, he's still staring straight ahead. He goes, I want you to know it's okay to masturbate. <laughs> My first thought was like, here? <laughs> but then I moved beyond that. I'm like, okay, cool. I was 12, by the way. I reached for the door handle, he goes, wait! And I'm like, yeah? He goes, I'm telling you that because my dad told me if I masturbated, I would grow hair in my palms and go blind, and neither of those things happen. I'm like, well, you do wear glasses. He goes, it's, it's, it's genetics. So I'm like, okay. I reached for the door handle again, he goes, wait! Now, mind you, he still not looked me in the eye. He's still staring straight ahead having this conversation with the garage door while I'm sitting here looking at him. At this point, I realize I have the upper hand, so to speak. Is that the lower hand? Balls. Anyway. What? You know what I'm talking about, Will. So, I'm like, what's up? He goes, I still masturbate. <laughs> At this point, I'm trying not to laugh, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. He still hasn't looked at me. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna go. He doesn't say anything, so I open the door. I said, I guess I'll see you inside. And I'm about to shut the door, he goes, wait! <laughs> I can't wait to hear what's gonna come next. At this point, I'm like, this is just keeps getting better. So I'm, I open the guitar door, I said, what? He's like, there's a... Uh, there's a big box of old Playboy magazines in the attic. You can have that if you want. And I said, it's been in my closet for three years. And I shut the door and walked away. <laughs> he was kind of like, <coughs> then he looked. So yeah, I, yeah, I've pretty much been exercising those ladies for a long time. <laughs> they were really good ones too, because they were the old ones. So it was just, yeah, they didn't even, a lot of them didn't even have pubic hair back then. I mean, the women did, but the magazine didn't show it. It was like a, like a Barbie doll, I guess. Anyway, I look to Will for guidance sometimes because his last name is Kinsey, so he knows a lot about sex. All I'm seeing is big bushes when you talk about exactly. Seventy is the big yeah, it's sneaking out the side of the bikini and everything else. Don't see a lot of that Key West, though. That'd be well waxed, apparently. We appreciate that. My experience. But uh, anyway, I went in the house. My dad just kind of came in, and my mom was, "How's your drive?" And at that moment, my dad walked through the door and he goes, it was great. She's like, what'd you guys talk about? And I go, dad, I'm gonna go up to my room. Why don't you uh, bring mom up to speed on our conversation? Cause I have some work to do. <laughs> and he's just like, that was pretty funny. My parents were actually really cool. They were very open with me when I was, I remember like two or three, we went to the library and got this book about where the babies come from. And learned about penises and vaginas and you know, the right words for everything and when I was, I'm gonna get really personal with you right now. When I was two, I had a small lesion on my penis. Yeah, I said it. So I had to go get it checked out. My mom stood me up on the table and the doctor said, well, let's get your pants down and take a look at your potty goer. I looked at my mom and she goes, that's your penis. I'm like, okay. So he examined it, and figured out what needed to be done, a little salve or whatever. And when we got out in the car, my sister said, well, is it gonna be okay? I said, yeah, do you know what a potty goer is? She's like, no, and I said, it's your penis my penis and then we laughed a lot so <laughs> we still talk about that story 
not my sister and I, but other people. <laughs> I know my sister and I don't talk about things like that because that would be creepy. I mean, I'm creepy, but not with my sister. Other people's sisters. <laughs> no problem. So yeah. Um, Masturbation is still fun for me as well. My dad kind of turned me on to that, and you know, it never gets old. My <laughs> wife works a lot of nights, so a little lonely time. I don't know if you guys are familiar with The Stranger, where you sit on one hand until it falls asleep. Then it feels like somebody else is doing it for you. That's kind of cool. Somebody said to me once, well, what if your hand wakes up? I said, well, the whole time you're doing The Stranger, we've got the other one under the other cheek, so it's ready to go. It's all about planning ahead. What I didn't have the heart to tell her is when you're by yourself, it doesn't take as long as when you do it. But we're just better at it. It's like the home field advantage is like, guys are like, I'm gonna get a blowjob from a dude. That would be weird. No, it'd be awesome, dude, because he knows what to do. He knows what it feels like. Why do you think lesbians that like women and gay men like men? They like the home field advantage. They don't like to have to teach anybody. It's a teachable moment. No, you should just know what's going on. Touch me there, it's gonna feel good. Cut the balls. Remember, I mentioned it earlier, always cut the balls. <laughs> Danny knows about cupping the balls. Right, Danny? Danny used to be my roommate, and I can tell you he knows a lot about cupping the balls. <laughs> he drinks a lot of beer, and so sometimes he'd be like, Hey, Danny, are you awake? Cool. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Was that inappropriate? I'm sorry. I'm rarely inappropriate. But anyway, the Boat Boys are coming tonight. That's Boat Boys, not Butt Boys. I want to make that clear. So that's why I got to go first tonight, is because the Boat Boys are still coming in from Sunset Sales. And Joe works on a boat. A lot of the other guys work on the boat. I don't work on a boat. I drive the Chicago train, so I'm used to tourists. Spend all day with them, which is sometimes awesome. Sometimes it's not. By the way, when the light is red, don't cross when, when you're walking. Just if That goes for everybody, not just tourists, but anybody. Yeah, and the light is red, you have to stop the entire time. <laughs> A lot of people come to Key West, they're in Mustang convertibles, but they never put the top down. Why waste the money? When they do, they drive around in the driver's seat with their phone in both hands on top of the windshield, shooting videos They go down to Ball Street. No hands on the wheel, that's fun. But a thing that happens here, more, more often than I've ever seen anywhere else, they come to a stoplight, and they stop because it's red. So far, they're doing well. 30 seconds into that, they're like, nope, I've stopped long enough, and they'll just go. <laughs> right, traffic coming both ways the other way, they'll go right through the middle of it like nothing's going on. I can tell you right now, that is not how it works. You stop for the entire time that it's red. We just got back from a trip to Mexico. They do a thing there that I think we should kind of adopt here. This is just a public service announcement, not necessarily to be comedy here. But before the light turns red, it flashes yellow. Oh, sorry, it flashes green. My wife is correcting me because that's her job. She does a really good job of it, and she does it a lot, because, well, I'm not that bright, but very handsome. <laughs> anyway, before the light turns red, it blinks green. The green light blinks a couple times, and you know it's about to go yellow, then red, so you don't have to guess. Does it do anything going the other way or no? Okay, but no. But we decided that was a good idea. I'm not trying to change this up. I know you just told you one set of rules, now I'm trying to tell you a new set of rules that we're trying to adopt, but nothing happens that fast here. It's Key West. But what I really want to do is say thank you to everybody for showing up tonight, supporting local comedy. It's very important. This is how we do this. If you're out on Monday nights, every Monday night at Mary Ellen's Bar over on, what's the name of that road? Apple, Apple Roth Lane. Across from Virgilio's, we do an open mic night where anybody can get up and, and do this. You don't even have to be invited. We have also do a thing called Tell a Joke there. And every, every fourth week, it's three weeks of comedy, and then the fourth week is a drunk spelling bee. I don't even need to tell you any more about that. Other than the only thing is you need to know drunk, spelling bee. That's all you have to know. It's a good time. So come out for that. Keep coming to this show. And thanks to the Blue Room for hosting us, by the way. Thanks to Joe and Annie for making this happen for 36 straight weeks in a row. And thanks to Will for strumming his strings. Kicking it for real. Big Willie style. But thanks for coming out. Thanks for thinking I'm funny. That's always fun. And now my friend Asia's coming through the door right when I finish. Should I tell her she's... Asia, you're here in just in time for me to say goodbye. I love you, and I want you to thank you for coming. I've got the whole thing on video. Everybody say to my friend Asia Matthews in the back of the room. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for coming out. I'm going to hand this over to Annie. This is the part where you clap, and, and this, is where I, this is the part where I get needy. Here, I'll put this over here. The professionals put the microphone back and then there's me. I'm, I'm gonna go now. <laughs>